Hello and welcome, welcome friends to another edition of Horn of Africa Conversations uh, with my good friend and comrade, Professor Mohammed uh, Hassan, as always. How are you today, Mohammed? I'm okay, comrade Elias. I'm okay. Weather is better. Uh, it's getting warmer and I see that uh, you got your haircut now. Yes, yes. I had my haircut. Uh, the barber was very busy. People are coming out yesterday and the, the day before yesterday. It was a very nice weather. You could see the population is suffocating with this corona uh, mm -hmm. regulation. Uh, people are walking with their families, uh, elderly people coming out from home. They really wanted to breathe. You could see they are preparing for the end of this uh, local. That's good. Yeah. Spring is uh, around the horizon. So, uh... Uh, weather will be warming and hopefully this lockdown will ease a bit. Huh? Indeed, indeed. Uh, in our conversation this week, uh, we had promised that we will continue on uh, Somalia, part two, but uh, we will defer it to next week. Uh, in this episode, we're going to focus on uh, the interview of President Isses, uh, which was done last week. Uh, February 17 on Wednesday. It has generated a lot of uh, interest in the region and uh, as well as globally. Of course, uh, we've been closely following events on the ground in the Horn of Africa, Eritrea, Ethiopia, the situation in Tigray. And uh, in his interview, the president did touch on, uh, on all these uh, wide ranging issues. Uh, so what is your reading? Although uh, it has not been translated into Amharic, uh, uh, but I'm sure you've read some excerpts in uh, Arabic and uh, the English summary, of course, uh, the regional uh, TVs like Al Jazeera in Arabic have also done uh, a bit of uh, coverage of it. What do you make uh, of the interview? What's your reading of uh, President Isaias's uh, latest interview? Thank you very much, Comrade uh, Elias. I have read and listened also uh, the whole interview in Tigrinya, and I could follow the the different uh, chapters uh, uh, the president uh, uh, discussed about. Uh, in fact, I was not new for the thinking uh, and analysis uh, President Isaias is doing. Uh, I was following him for a very long time. But to take uh, uh, as a starting point, in order to understand the thinking and the analysis of the President Isaias, understanding Ethiopia, understanding the region, and understanding Sudan, Somalia, and all the region and the Red Sea area. Uh, when uh, I met President Isaias and me and two comrades from Oromo or, or Media Network, and we met him there at uh, his office. Uh, this was uh, the Oromia Media Network, Network interview of uh, March 2017, I believe. Indeed, yeah? indeed. Which is four years ago, exactly. Four years ago. That's why I wanted to connect it and then how it is. Continuously, the president. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, reading, do do connect it. Do make the connections, please. Yes. His reading and the flow of his thinking, it is it is is the same, and it's mm -hmm. growing with all the if the the up and down of of, of the historical situation in the region. Uh, that day when we went uh, to his office to make an interview, before the interview, he briefed us about the situation. He briefed us in a sense that it is, uh, uh, he said, I don't understand how TPLF cannot read what is written on the ground. Mm. The writing on the wall was clear, but was TPLF could not read it. They couldn't grasp it. This is one. They, they couldn't grasp it because they are very, very far away from the masses. Their ear and the, the, their heart beating is connected to external forces, who subsidize them. 
the strengthening also is the external force really also cannot read why they are living in a disabeba they have embassies they have their intelligence they have this they couldn't read what is happening on the ground mm -hmm. this is the first mistake tplf and it is back at the mid when we made the interview the president he said in a conclusion by explaining a lot of things in between including the uh, renaissance dam and whatever it is you call it the president he said game is over this is 2017 but not a lot of people understood the term the political philosophy the president was speaking at that particular time what he mean game is over mm. this was at the height of course of the oromo protests uh, indeed the massacre of the recha massacre had happened indeed. the things were uh, just hitting up in all corners of the country indeed so when he said tplf game is over means there is going to be a change, a qualitative change within Ethiopia. But even TPLF was not concerned because they don't, have, they don't listen to the heart beating of the masses, what's happening on the ground. What are the Ethiopian people in general? They look, how they look toward this regime. But mm -hmm. President Isaias himself being from the region, and then so on from that distance he checked the temperature of the population and checked the temperature of the ruling group and said it's over there is no way you cannot survive mm -hmm. and this game over the word game over it has two meaning when you open uh, the envelope of uh, game over one mm -hmm. is that it is an advice to tpla your old method doesn't work adjust yourself being a tiny minority try to sit on the top of a hundred something million population the population have revolted against you and it's it sees you it sees you sorry a sorry. new a new game is uh, is about to start the old game is over yes. and therefore uh, you have you have two options either adjust yourself to the new game yes. accept the, the the people's demand yes. or you will be swept away uh, and uh, be consigned to the dustbin of history so to history. speak that's what he means yeah but it is they didn't understand because they themselves at that moment it is uh, the late abai sahaye was saying that it is we will show you to the oromo leaders you will, Im will impose yeah. you this the program look and ask about Charlton is in Amharic <laughs> yes in Amharic anyone who who does not accept our diktat we will uh, crush you and put right. you in your right look, place is what he said <laughs> that's what he said this is the difference between the president Isaias uh, uh, understanding from, from about the Ethiopian situation and the leadership in Ethiopia Second the point, TPLF, uh, yeah. TPLF, yes, they, 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 were, they were ruling Ethiopia by that moment. Yes, yes. The dominant, the dominant in the name of EPRD. So uh, you, actu actually, Mohammed, that was their last year. A year after that, you, you made the Oromia Media Network in March 2017. And by March 2018, They are gone. Uh, the reform uh, forces took over. Uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed came to power. Indeed. And so they were, is, yes. Yeah, uh, first of all, it is the reading now we are speaking, how the president of Eritrea and far sight understanding what is uh, what he always used to say that it is uh, uh, the neighborhood. He understood what kind of he's living in a neighborhood, and he, he analyzed the neighborhood situation, and in particularly Ethiopia. And he came, it is like he made an x-ray, uh, uh, he made a blood test, uh, uh, a urine test of the situation of Ethiopia, and the result, including x-ray, uh, whether it have a TB or whatever it is, 
and he says, this patient will die, game is over. Then take, huh? in this game over, it's an advice also to the ruling uh, ethno uh, uh, organization of TPLA to adjust to the new situation. Mm-hmm. In a normal circumstance, if you, uh, Comrade Elias, you are leading that party and you are on the top of, of that. And, 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 and of course, uh, you are, uh, a TPLA is the dominant, but it have EPRD. They should have understood that also within the party there will be a revolt and they will, mm. they will uh, be pushed away. If they are a very serious people and really uh, 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 an advanced politicians or a militant group, they could have sat and studied what President Isaias he mean by. Did is he really is he studying us? Is he giving us advice, or is he is belittling us because of their ignorance, because of the hate they have accumulated toward toward him as a person? They couldn't analyze it, and this made them blind. Also, could it be, uh, Muhammad, that uh, their patrons had fooled them? I mean. They had pumped them up so much uh, to make them believe that uh, they were uh, invincible, that they will rule Ethiopia for the next hundred years. Nothing will happen to them. The Americans are back in them. The Europeans are back in them. So everything is okay. Is perhaps that kind of delusion? That could be one of the factor. But it is the, the major delusion is that it is it is it is uh, their masters or their backers themselves, they couldn't understand the dynamic happening in Ethiopia and their mm-hmm. institutions and their delegates who are stationed in Ansawa, they could not read. To give you an example, let alone even African uh, uh, embassies could not analyze what's happening. As I have told you last mm-hmm. time, the two ambassadors of South Africa who have lived in that country, both of them for 48 months in that country, they never heard of a people called Oromo while coming from a serious oppressed uh, people of South Africa, suffered under apartheid, British colonialism, and so, and so on. So in that way, there is a, I can understand that the, uh, the ANC itself couldn't make its own studies and, and could not analyze the contradiction what's happening in Ethiopia. Let alone these chancelleries and embassies of uh, the imperialist countries, whether small or big or dependent imperialist and, and strong imperialist countries, they couldn't understand. So their diplomats, their intelligence things, I don't know how they were informing, informing to the center, but they were also caught surprised. So they didn't also analyze what President Isaias he means. He's a president of a neighboring country. He says, game over. So what they took, as if he's angry on Ethiopia. So this is very shallow understanding of history, understanding of dynamic. Uh, of you know, the- in a way, uh, they could not see what was happening right under their nose. I mean, Indeed. all the the African Union representatives, embassies, foreign, uh, Western governments, all these things that were happening right under their nose, they could yes. not make the correct reading. Absolutely. A lot of people, they were asking me, they say, are you crazy? You are thinking in that way? It is, it is. Because the media and the imperialist country also, it didn't cover these four years, popular uprise mm-hmm. and so on, of uh, Ethiopian people against the, the TPLA. So, the, or they were covering it in a very shallow way, uh, not, the, not deep analysis, bit of propaganda here and there. Uh, yes. But this is just a, a hiccup that things will be normal, uh, uh, business yes. as usual uh, after a while. This type of coverage, yeah? Yes, this is their understanding. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the change came and the TPLF was removed, TPLF uh, removed, again, the understanding of the media and the understanding of uh, the... Uh, Western embassies and the movement or the, uh, the steps uh, that Rabi took, they couldn't understand. They couldn't understand the glue that holds this group in power for 27 years. 
that false glue, that it is a false uh, 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 glue which have kept the minority to be dominant in Ethiopia. Their embassies, their medias, and so on, never understood. And that important glue is the so-called umbrella organization, EPRD. When Dr. Abi removed uh, EPRD, the concept of EPRD was, was, was removed, uh, uh, like removing the carpet, the carpet from their feet, TPLF was replaced to its own place. That's why they ran away to Tigray. So it is over. There mm -hmm. is no way they can dominate Ethiopia. There is no way they can they can be uh, they can sit at the, the throne and control everybody. So major, which break uh, uh, the back of the camel. This also mm -hmm. they never understood. That is also is game over. Game over in a sense as it is that it is it have a lot of stairs, a lot of implication. The game over. One of the mm -hmm. game over is that. You will lose the power and you will come back to Tigray. That is it in, in, mm -hmm. in ordinary language. That's what the president, he means. Secondly, it's very important uh, uh, in that, after that interview, Eritrea took steps to, to show, took steps. Eritrea, first of all, here we have to be very, very, very clear. Uh, Eritrean government and Eritrean people have no historical antagonistic relationship with the people of Tigray. With the whole people of Ethiopia, for that matter. Of course, the whole Ethiopia, uh, uh, beyond that. Even now, the, the assumption is, with all the propagandas now they are doing, that there is also a misreading. I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on the misreading. I lived in Eritrea. I lived in Eritrea. I, I talked to a lot of Eritreans. I visited a lot of Eritrean houses. Despite of Eritreans being a victim of TPLF, they have differentiated between TPLF and the people of Tigray. The second step Eritrea did after the downfall of TPLF and, and, and TPLF is coming, uh, which is the game over, is to open for them. So the border was opened for them. And I met these Tigrayan young people business people, men and women and so on, and a lot of other Ethiopians are coming and so on, selling their goods, buying goods and so on. And then the Um Hajar, which you are talking about, that it mm. is the president, president uh, and the prime minister Abi and the president of region of Tigray, they met at that moment. That mm -hmm. chance also they couldn't use. When the president asked, asked him, he said, why you are preparing? It's a very important statement what the president said, and it made me personally very sad. Why you are preparing for the war? Mm -hmm. Why you don't? Uh, in fact, uh, in the you know in the prelude to that, uh, what the president said was uh, in Zalambasa, the, the the border opening was first. In the yes, south, yes, Asab, yes. Huh? yes, Asab, yes. Uh, then a day later, uh, September 2018, huh, yes. was the opening of the central one in Zalambasa. Yes. So the president said in Zalambasa, I didn't have the appetite, uh, although Prime Minister Abi was constantly pushing for a dialogue. Why don't you meet with uh, the British? And uh, he wants to meet. Uh, I said, well, uh, let us first uh, make, uh, create a con conducive atmosphere. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, we should not be rushed. We should, we have our own experience and we'll take it step by step cautiously. So uh, in uh, Zalambasa, it, it was not conducive. We didn't, uh, we didn't have uh, much time. It was mere formality of the opening of the border. This was September 2018. Then Omhajar, Humara opening of the border was in January 2019, almost about uh, four or five months afterwards. Okay. So uh, at that time also, Prime Minister Abi was pushing for, uh, for a meeting. Uh, at first he said, uh, I was not going to go. 
But then at the last minute, we changed our mind and I said, I, I will attend. So uh, he said, uh, I hesitated a bit whether to, to, to broach this subject to Debrecen at first. But then I said, why not? They have to know. So he said, uh, Debrecen, why are you making this war preparations? Uh, the Brazilian, of course, uh, tried to deny it, but uh, he said, you yeah, know, we have all the information, the intelligence uh, report. We know you are making war preparations. This is futile, and it will be very, very destructive. You do not need to go that route. Uh, embrace the peace. Peace is uh, the only alternative, the only option. But uh, he said, uh, the reason I, I wanted to say this was to convey a clear message through the Brazilian to the TPLF, click as a whole, the, the leadership, that the war option is, is going to be futile. We know you are making war preparations. Don't try to fool uh, yourself that we are not aware. We are very much aware that you are making war preparations. But that is, this is going to be very, very dangerous and futile and destructive, is what he said. Now continue. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, when the Lambasa front was opened and all Ethiopians were coming to Tigray and to, to Eritrea, I was present. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were in Asmara at that time, I was yeah? in Asmara. In also, Eritrea. When, when Umhajar was open, I was also in Asmara. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, luckily, I was there. Uh, I was thinking, uh, uh, because I'm trying to think and, and to interpret the, the concept of game over. I, I, I base my understanding to Ethiopia, to the change, to TPLA, to the people of Tigray, and so on. This game over, this very big word, the very big formula, which is meeting with the Brazilian and talking to him as the president explained, it is part of the fraction of the game over. Adjust yourself. Don't lose. You will bring disaster to yourself. You will bring also disaster to the people of Tigray. Mm -hmm. So the interpretation here is very, very important. We have to be very honest and decent when we analyze things. I think the president advising them, adjust yourself and adjust and respect your own people. If you continue on this line, you will lose. War has no meaning. War only mm -hmm. brings a destruction. And in fact, even whatever you looted and you stole and you built in Tigray, you will destroy it. Respect the people of Tigray. This is what he's telling them. Mm -hmm. If a serious organization, Comrade uh, Elias, this is about 25, 30 people, maybe 50 people, if they mm -hmm. have just said, and said, okay, this game over, it's true. We are only 6% of the total population. We had one time a lottery. We have abused it. We didn't had a project of nation building. We abused it, we divided it, we looted it in alliance with other forces, and now we reached it to this level. Let us go back, two steps backward. Huh? Let's think now that it is not only for us because we are also elderly. Hmm? Let us reorganize our party and bring young people that will have a bright ideas that can save Tigray and rebuild a bridge between Tigray and the Ethiopian people, rebuild the bridge between Tigray and the Eritrea, Eritrea, remove this warmonger uh, 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 ideology, uh, this warlord psychology, integrate gradually ourselves in the region. If they were thinking like that, and that's what the president is advising them, they will not lose everything. That's why he said in the now recent interview, in one he said it's a miscalculation. How can yes. you mis yes? How can you calculate? Huh? You miscalculate on the life of six, seven, eight million people, comrade. Mm -hmm. I can miscalculate on my life, probably. 
maybe maximum I must come and I calculate of my family. Then my wife she will leave me, my children can be very angry on me and so on, and probably me, I will, uh, uh, I will, I will commit suicide or I will do something because of my grave miscalculation as an individual. But you cannot miscalculate calculate on the life of millions of Tigrayan people and so on. So mm-hmm. imagine now the result of it, the result of it. When he talked to him, why do you prepare for a war? War is a destruction. You will never benefit. Think of your own people. Whatever they have built now is destroyed, comrade Indians. Imagine mm-hmm. me and you. We are at Tigrawai. And we have nothing to do with TPLA, but we wanted to live our life. Let's give even the benefit of the doubt to the TPLA. The number of uh, the urbanized Tigrayan have increased. They have built universities. They have built the factories. And so, so we'll give them some credit, let's assume, with Tigrayan mm-hmm. nationalism, sentiment, and so on. But we don't want it to be destroyed. Ethiopia is a very poor country. Whatever they have built, it, they shut up it, they destroyed it. Now Tigray went back pre-1975 situation, huh? yeah, and, and so on. And not only that, when you are as an organization, you have to analyze. You have enlarged your, your region like a plastic, elastic fit, and so on. You have taken a region, uh, an, an area from another region, integrated it, as we have uh, uh, in, in your area. From the other region, you took it, and that we have discussed in the past. Language is not the only factor of bringing you a Tigrayan. That serious mistake they did in their manifesto, they have never also thought of that. If a war comes, inevitably these areas, the population and Amhara and, and, and others, there will be united front against you. Third major thing. Dr. Abi was soft to Africa. You could see, as President Isaiah says, Dr. Abi is always asking me to meet Dr. Yeah. The, the, but he was constantly, constantly pushing, constantly why don't pushing. you meet with them? They are, uh, so he they, doesn't... they can be partners of the peace and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, the president's uh, take was that uh, we, on our part, he said, uh, we had our own negative experience prior negative experience with this group. So we wanted to take it slowly to build the conducive atmosphere first that will lead towards uh, towards uh, rapprochement, so, so to speak, if there is a willingness on the other side, if it's genuine. Uh, the other thing he said was uh, for us, the border issue was, uh, was not uh, of primary concern. I mean, that... Uh, once Ethiopia and Dr. Abi's government accepted the ruling of the Boundary Commission, we we didn't want to push that as a bad man and the border uh, as the number one issue. Mm. For us, the number one issue was how do we consolidate, strengthen the peace? How do we stabilize the situation in Ethiopia uh, post TPLF? Uh, and then the, the border issue w- will be resolved naturally, uh, is what he said. So there, there was a lot of flexibility. There was a lot of willingness. There was, on the part of Eritrea, uh, the desire, genuine desire to avert war, to warn these people in, in Tigray that war is, uh, is, go- is going to have disastrous consequences. But... Unfortunately, uh, it fell on deaf ears. Perhaps the patrons uh, were also pushing them uh, towards this this war pass, as they did in 1998. Uh, and the president uh, also said, uh, all wars are, most wars, are started by miscalculation. Indeed. So as the 1998 border conflict war was started by miscalculation, so also the TPLF again miscalculated, but this time for the final time, I think. I think the organization TPLF and TPLF uh, leadership in the process since 1992 and so on, and this, they became gradu- gradually junkies. 
Junkies, they cannot stop their drug addiction without a therapy. Mm, the addiction to wars and conflicts and... Uh... They are addicted because they are, the, the, their patrons understood and analyzed their psychology and an, analyzed how frightened minority they were. Mm-hmm. So in order to use, imagine if you are from an external force and you wanted to use that. Of course, the imperialists, they don't have even an iota respect and, and love to the people of Tigray. We know that. They don't care. They don't give a shit about African, uh, Africans or Arabs, whatever it is. But they study them and they addict them. And of course, uh, in this new, like you buy a new hamburger with a new sauce, what you will do to such a, a primitive element who are ruling that place and, 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 and of course, by accident of history, that they the are a minority, they took over a huge country. You have to sing for them. You have to bring a cineast who made a film for them. You have to bring a violin. You have to be bring a saxophonist for them to tell them you are brave people, like your grandfathers, like Alula, and so on and so on. This went on into their head, and they became addicted. Mm-hmm. You always see from, the, from, from, from that angle. The imperialists mm-hmm. also made them a victim. They are also victims of their own shadow. So frightened, they studied them and everything, and then they pumped them. After they left to Tigray, for example, I was sudden. He was also my former boss. The late Minister of Foreign Affairs, you must know. He mm-hmm. came on Tigray television and he says, who will defeat them? The EPA, EPA they he said, have 10 million membership. So, what is counting this man? He's already chased away from Addis Ababa. He ran away from Addis Ababa. He's in Makale. He's talking to, to Tigray television and he says that EPA they have 10 million members. 10 million members, he means, huh? in another part of Ethiopia. They will rise up against Dr. Abi. So this, mm. this man, for 20 years, he was leading the Ethiopian diplomacy. Mm-hmm. The Ethiopian diplomacy for, for 20 years. Mm. The Akam, the capacity of, of understanding his environment is very poor, mm-hmm. which is, means also most of them, they are very poor, their understanding. The concept about war, the concept it is reduced to their own place, but had accumulated a lot of wealth. They have a good certain infrastructure for Tigray and so on. They could have saved that. Now they left. They themselves, they could not save themselves. They died. Secondly, that they destroyed the people of Tigray. They they gambled it away. Uh, uh, in, a, in a in a way, though, could you suicide. say that uh, this suicide. this ending was uh, like the tragic ending of a Greek drama? <laughs> you know, yes. the ancient Greeks had yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, they created this tragedy. Uh, you know that it's going to end with a tragic uh, conclusion. Huh? But yet for the Greeks, uh, tragedy was a sort of, uh, of catharsis that would cleanse the soul <laughs> as, a, as a lesson to the spectators, huh? mm-hmm. warning them this is the course of history. Uh, if you follow a certain path, inevitably it will end in doom. Uh, maybe like the the Oedipus Rex uh, tragedy. I mean, they were famous with this uh, kind yes, of uh, the Greek tragedy. Tragedies, huh? Yeah. So this this uh, was like a Greek tragedy in a way, a very very sad uh, and tragic. Uh, and now here uh, here comes the second part of it, uh, Comrade Elias. Uh-huh. The second part of it is that it is. Uh, the second the tragedy again, it's not only tragedy in the destruction of uh, uh, of Tigray and the resources of Tigray, whatever they have built for the last 29, 28, 29 years. 
to maintain this is what wicked and dirty uh, 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 about the imperialist media mm-hmm. battles. Also, that contradiction to continue in the mind of the masses of uh, Tigray. They have lost the war, their area is destroyed, but they want them to be again in the same theory which they have, uh, like I told you, to be addicted, like uh, uh, mm. a junkie. The campaign against the Eritrea. Eritrean army is, is raping uh, 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 Tigrayan women. The Eritrean uh, army is destroying Tigray. Looting, uh, killing uh, in looting churches and all, all kinds of lies. Also, uh, manufactured. lies. Yeah. If I'm a Tigrayan, the nearest, the nearest in every logic of it is the people of Eritrea and the people of Ethiopia, my, my brothers and sisters. Why I would entertain such kind of a propaganda? You know, uh, uh, it surprised me in a way that it is uh, how they control them, how the junkie is really seriously addicted. Uh, 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 uh. It's in fact, the junkie is already dying. It is a life support machine. And, and then again, they inject on him a false uh, brotherhood that is, we will support the Tigray people. Tigray people are being attacked by Eritrean forces and so on, human rights and so on. These people, they don't care about Tigray. Huh? They're just in a beautiful halls of them in the European Parliament and this. Huh? One lady, she will stand up and talk two minutes and so on. They applaud and they go to the best restaurant with, with a very thick uh, 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 steak and so, and so on and a very nice wine and so on. They don't even remember whether Tigray, there is the people is living there or not. It's just, it's a joke. For them, mm-hmm. it's just, it is a way of living. Uh, they have no neighbors of Tigrayan. They have never met anybody and so on. It is pity that the pity bourgeoisie of the Tigrayans. They could That's have- what I, I, I uh, you already jumped the gun, but uh, I wanted to talk to you. Why is this intense propaganda campaign now against Eritrea in particular, but against the, the whole concept uh, of what we call the new Horn of Africa, the era of peace and cooperation? There seems to be a very vicious uh, and vitriolic uh, attack against it from the Western quarters, uh, their media and uh, some political operatives the European Union. Uh, uh, what is the rationale? What do you think? Uh, if I'm a junkie and you are selling for me and you are giving me a crack drug for 27 years, you are mm-hmm. not going to come and again with another dress and you will be a trappist uh, uh, and, 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 and a psychiatrist to tell me that it is the crack which I was giving you was not good for you. So you have to, con- <laughs> you are not going to tell me that because you don't want to. <laughs> well, that, that, that's a good analogy if you put it that to way. to be integrated in the region. So the drug pusher will, will continuously will push, try to bring yes, new types of drugs. Yes, unless. <laughs> more addictive and more uh, indeed, devastating. <laughs> indeed. So uh, from the people of Tigray, the democratic forces have to rise up and to say, enough is enough. Mm. We have been abused, used, Mm. we have been extremely abused and you have created for us a a, a psychology that we will be hated by all the people of the region, first in Ethiopia, then in the region. We were part of the region. We have to continue Mm. living. And it is this clique, a minority clique, which have brought us to that. So, the people of Tigray, the democratic forces in the Tigray, they have to do their own homework. For every people, they are responsible for their fate in the future. They have to take this as a lesson, as a historical, you see, mm-hmm. uh, uh, situation, and so what brought us to this situation? Because we were addicted, and the pusher still is, is wants us to continue on this line. We are running away, now we are in the refugee camp, and there probably wants to give the crack again, and to make uh, to use our children again as a con- cannon feeders and so, and so on, and Tigray mm-hmm. cannot stand up anymore. This is the homework of 
the most democratic element of Tigrayan people. Then we, they are our brothers and sisters, we will support them. We want the, the Tigray to reconstitute again. We want peace in Tigray and so on. That's what the president is saying. War is a very bad thing. It's destructive, he said. As he said, mm-hmm. war is most of the time comes with a miscalculation. So he was saddened for the people of Tigray. He said, what's going to happen to them? Whatever they have, they have destroyed it. So it is a problem for us. Those the, the, that, uh, 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 the, those who are uh, uh, producing the crack, the, 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 uh, they will continue because it is their interest is that to confuse the people of Ethiopia, uh, the people of the Horn of Africa, to, to put stone in the shoes of the idea of the new Horn of Africa, which is these three nations can work together, build it together, and so on. From that mm-hmm. point of view, that we, the most democratic element, we have to encourage the democratic forces in Tigray to be united, to start a new chapter, to work with us, and reintegrate, huh, and show they have now an experience of 45 years. What this ethnofascist had brought, not only a disaster to the whole people in the Horn of Africa, but above all, is a disaster to the people of Tigray. And this has to be discussed and we have to raise uh, uh, their consciousness. Another important point, you know, when you are already a junkie with extreme um, low level of crack and uh, the thinking, the brain is not functioning, it has a delusion around it. Uh, why you attack the army, uh, the, the federal army, which is a station? The president said that there are about 32,000, and about one third of them, they are from the people of Tigray themselves, uh, the officers and the, young, and the soldiers and so on who are covering the gun. Why do you do that? Unless you are really delusional. This is a suicide. Then you could see there is the mind, the, how, how the TPLF ideologically, is, mm-hmm. is a, a, an addicted, a, a junkie organization. To give one illustration of it, my former boss, the late my, uh, 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 Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, uh, uh, Atosiu Masman, he said on the television, Tigray television, he said the war, it will not be a small war. This war will be a very big regional war. And it's not only him, the former Minister of Defense of Ethiopia. Uh, uh, he says that this is not a, a village fight. It will be a very serious war. I was asking myself, is Tigray Kuwait? Or are they thinking perhaps like uh, the 30 year war of uh, medieval Europe <laughs> in which uh, is Tigray all countries. <laughs> Did they have resources that the imperialist, the strongest imperialist country will defend, will bring his daughters and sons to in the front line to fight and to die? No, Tigray is not Kuwait. Tigray is a very poor area. How this, and these are the leadership. To think in that way. And this shows that these people, they were not living on the earth. They were, they were uh, uh, not normal, the way they reason. I thought they had the political outcome and experience which they have ruled that country and so on, but they are not. Extreme poverty of critical thinking was there. Uh... Extreme poverty of critical thinking and they brought a disaster to the people of Tigray. The other mm-hmm. important element, which is also this is not normal. If you, I mean, you really need a, a, a serious psycho, uh, 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 psychological and so on analysis, a serious one, because mm-hmm. for a lot of reason. Uh, when I was watching the television, the last two years and a half, it was their best time to have a chance. I don't, they will never get a person like uh, Dr. Abi, which I have no uh, such an extreme vendetta against them. 
uh, they could deal with him. They could have remained in the region. They have organized their own election and so on and so on and wait for the national election and then deal with. No, they are, they are addicted. They don't, for them, Tigray is a village. They wanted to sit at the top on Ethiopia. And, then, mm. and to sit at the top, their masters pushed them. No, don't accept. They have never tried even. In normal circumstances, peace building, uh, they have to mm-hmm. come uh, around the table and so on. They didn't do for them. They just pushed them to go into direct antagonistic confrontation with the federal government in Addis Ababa. But they are not able to read what their so-called friends, whether they are so-called professors, media people, they couldn't differentiate between a leaf and a brain. And that is really, really poverty of philosophy, you could say it's here. And mm, extreme poverty of, mm. of logical thinking. Yes. Uh, the president also in this interview uh, said that uh, one of the things, uh, I mean, still the, the, the toxic legacy remains, uh, what he called Yefenji Politica. Uh, the, the, the minefields of uh, toxic uh, polarization that they left behind in Ethiopia are still there and that will require some time to recover from that. Uh, this resonates with his interview also a year ago, if you remember. He did touch upon that, and so this was a, a continuation of that. Uh, uh, if you can, please uh, connect the two. What was said a year ago, you remember, when when that interview came in some quarters uh, in our region, in Ethiopia, there was a lot of brouhaha, misunderstanding, until, of course, uh, the full interview came in Amharic later, and people could see the, the wider context from which the president was, was talking. Huh? So that was last year, exactly, February 2020 interview. And in this interview also, he did uh, continue along that line, that this kind of, uh, what he said was, I'm I'm trying to summarize it for you, uh, that uh, they deliberately planted this. Uh, Actually, what what he said, let me uh, (laughs) me take some time to explain it to you. Uh, In 1994, he said, when Meles Zenawi came to me with the draft constitution. He said, this is uh, the first draft. I wanted you to see it and give me your perspective. And so President Isaiah said, well, I need some time to to read it thoroughly. He said, take your time. So I read and reread and reread it and highlighted. And I said, this is a, a disaster for, for Ethiopia, not only Article 39, but the whole framework of the, of the, the whole thing, the structure, uh, the state, uh, you know, structure that it envisioned, that, that the constitution envisioned, was uh, one in which uh, it pitted ethnic group against ethnic group, sub-ethnic group, clans, uh, religious lines, and what have you. This was what it, it was designed. And I told Meles Zenawi, straightforward, that this is going to be a disaster for Ethiopia. Mm-hmm. And Meles said, well, uh, I know you were going to say that, but uh, uh, this is uh, the best thing for us. You know, uh, we'll... Uh, put minefields there. If uh, things go okay, fine. But if not, we will <laughs> explore these minefields. Uh, so the the toxic legacy still remains. And he said this is actually not a new thing in Ethiopia. It is a pattern, a continuum pattern that we have observed in Somalia, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Libya, and in Sudan, uh, that this type of polarization to weaken the nation, uh, the nation state, is deliberately designed. Uh, It pits uh, sectarian groups, uh, 
Sometimes uh, they're cloaked under religious uh, garb or clothing, sometimes against ethnic uh, uh, you know, clothing. But uh, eventually it leads to chaos, civil war, and then come the non-governmental organizations from the West, of course, to save, <laughs> to save the day, to make their intervention and uh, to manage the crisis. Huh? In this way, nations are, uh, you know, fragmented. Uh, chaos is deliberately instigated. And uh, this is what we have been seeing as a pattern all over uh, the region. I mean, the wider region was what he was talking about. So uh, talk, if you will, about this, uh, this pattern of chaos, uh, this strategy of chaos, because... You have also written about this, The Strategy of Chaos, your book. Uh, uh, so you, you are an expert in, in, in this regard. Uh, please do take some time to, to Thank you. Uh, elaborate on that. Uh, the thinking of the president, it is, it, is, uh, it is the thinking of his organization also. If one go deeper. His organization also is a product against this sectarian division, whether it is by language or religion. This is a young man born under the British. What the British did in his country it is still left in his memory and in all his, his struggle for it. The division that they have created among the Eritrean people to weaken the man and woman in Eritrea. Mm, you're talking about the 1940s. Uh, the 1940s. The, the, the 10 years uh, British. The 10 years uh, British transition. Yes, and finally, 1941 to 1951. Yes, yeah. which later on brought also a disaster to the Eritrean people, and then they have mm-hmm. to go a very long journey. He did mention that in this interview, yes. the president did mention a very this. long journey with a lot of sacrifice from Red Elias. Yes, so indeed. The Eritreans have this source. They know what does it mean. It's mm-hmm. a drug which makes... Uh, some element crazy and creates hate among the people. So mm-hmm. to reorganize the men and the nation, you have to pay a huge bill about it. So the whole struggle which Eritreans paid until 1991 is 65,000 martyrs. Mm-hmm. When you don't this is, have- this is- Combatants only, but Combatants. if you add civilians to it, it uh, is uh, can, yes. That's what I wanted to say. It is huge, to, yes. To understand, to understand uh, uh, that one have to go deep into the modern Eritrean history. Second, when the Italian took over and colonialism came, the po- the whole total population of Eritrea was. One million, maybe, maximum. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine, Comrade Elias, from this one million people, you take 150,000 young people, which are the backbone of the society, and put them in the army and send them to every war Italy have joined, in Libya, Somalia, and so and so on. Until now, yeah. only 18,000 of them are identified. The Eritrean government is asking the government of Italy, where is our sense you have taken? This mm, is the, the, the records, yeah. The records. These are the people who want to tell us that they have human rights. Human rights as long as their interest is defended. They don't mm-hmm. care about us. We have a lot of reason to go to court against them. Imagine 150,000 young Italian will be recruited by Germany and fights in Namibia and dies. Do you think Italians will keep quiet? No, the state, so 
For that is that my brothers and sisters in Tigray, their understanding of the world situation is very, very poor. Very ignorant. That is why they bring them against us, our brother and sister, to fight us, as if it is being indirectly a mercenary for external forces. Now to come to your point. In Ethiopia, of course, for everybody, in fact, I would really like, uh, 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 in order to confirm what the president says, that they, the, what the TPLF wrote, what an EPLF wrote, please, Comrade Elias, it has to be in the notes that it is the Adulis 1985 and our differences with TPLF, uh, with EPLF of the TPLF. I, I would really like the, 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 the the viewers who are listening to us also to have a reading package that they can read these two documents to compare and to see. So Mali Zenawi, he understood and misread the national situation in reverse. Hmm. And that destroyed the PPL. Simple as that. If one goes very deep, they already, and here is the imperialist understood. And when you look his interviews, huh, the first interview he did with Paul Hens, it indicates that. Mm -hmm. One, he even asked about that the Israeli professor who wrote about Alula. It's an in the interview. So, yes, Haggai uh, Ehrlich. Yes, so Haggai Ehrlich. And Paul Hens. Paul Hens in that interview, it's a very good document for Tigrayans now, democratic Tigrayans, to read and to understand what happened to them. The seeds of their, of their destruction, it was planted then. That was 1990, yes? 1990, because they didn't want to listen. You can advise me, you can tell me a lot of things, Comrade Elias. It is up to me to read your advice, understand your advice, and adjust and rectify. An organization doesn't make a rectification that it was wrong what I have followed. Then that it is at one stand you follow the wrong line. But is the bravery is that when you correct it and you come to the correct line. So they thought a double as a minority. Imagine here is the thinking. When mm -hmm. the president read, I can understand if it was written by Oromos. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I'm a majority, or well, majority in a sense in Ethiopia, everybody is minority, but the number, the number of the uh, uh, the the degree or it, uh, or or, or uh, the number differs. So, no. if I am a minority, imagine now, let it reverse. I come, we took over the power, we Somalis in Ethiopia. I come to the President Tsayas in 1994. I'm saying this is our view about Ethiopia and we wanted to rule Ethiopia this way. I'm sure the President will read and will say, even he will add two extra things. He will laugh. Mm. He will laugh and he will ask me, Mr. Muhammad, I know you are a Somali. We know uh, you have also brothers in Somalia and you have brothers in Kenya. You have brothers in Djibouti and so on. Yeah. So, in fact, this is strategy of you, this constitution, at the, at the end, you wanted to, to join with Somalia, isn't it? That is it. There is nothing. With Tigray, I have no that uh, uh, possibility. Yes, uh, don't abuse the others. You are now strong. You can join now clearly and leave the others to live uh, among themselves. But I'm not that situation. I'm the PPLA, neighboring, mm -hmm. neighboring thing. And he, knowing that their psychology and knowing what they are thinking, that it is they want greater Tigray and this and this. He advised them, this is a boom you are making against yourself. 
This is and uh, against the uh, the other peoples of Ethiopia as well. Yes, but it is the the most important point is that it is a uh, uh, you you become a, a kamikaze politics. Yeah, in the end, this uh, this minefield or this time bomb you are yeah. planting in Ethiopia will come and destroy will you. Will come and destroy you, and that's what happened to them. Mm. They thought they can send it other side, but it came to them. And then they they went into a siege mentality, huh? and then one of it is that to attack the federal army, which is protecting them there and so and so on. You know, mm. they lost everything, uh, Comrade Elias. Like you go to a casino and you have, uh, uh, I have smoked uh, uh, a crack drug and I lose everything where I have in the casino, in a very uh, easily. Yeah, in fact, the president's word here in Tigrinya, he said, this is I've done, which is uh, uh, an unimaginable craziness to yes. to to yes. take that November 4 preemptive attack in the dead of the indeed. night on, uh, on the any, sleeping soldiers. Indeed, in any calculation, comrade, in mm. any calculation, it's not in their advantage. In any calculation. So you mm. could see that it is, it is, TPLF died, it is leadership died because of very narrow provincial thinking. And there is the imperialist took an advantage of it, like, mm. uh, and so on. And they used them and used them and used against them. That is what the conclusion the president is saying. Because, because it's, it's not normal, he says, such kind of miscalculation. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. so, and when he made uh, the brochure, he said, don't destroy your home. Imagine, Elias, I'm taking uh, an, 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 a gallon of petrol, and you are coming to visit me, and I will tell you that, look, I'm going to burn my house because my wife made me, uh, she, uh, made me angry. What you will tell me? Muhammad, don't be crazy. The house it belongs to you, to her, to the children. And so on. And if you wanted to burn the house, you would burn also the neighbor house, and so and so on. So for the Somalis, they say in their proverb, for the crazy, his family are not crazy. If I'm crazy, my family will take me to hospital to be treated. CPLF was crazy, but never had a family. And no, uh, there is no way. We tried to explain to CPLF from distance, President Isaias, which we just tried to explain to them, and so and so on. But they couldn't understand. For them, they are obsessed with, as a junkie, those who mm. are for them, the crack drug, and now they drop them. It's over. They will never talk about the drug from now on. Uh, so you think no, this you know, noise is uh, temporary? It, it will is die away? They will just say these are foolish people. For any European and American alias who lived too long in America and grew up in America, any rational American worker, if you just tell him this story, simple story, this, he will just laugh. If you are controlling the, 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 a big company, a multinational in America, and belongs to you, do you think you will burn it? Because you are angry that the workers made several days in a strike? You will never do that. So these people, they are really, really, really drugged. And, and two years and a half of transition they had, if they were very clever, that it is, they, they could have listened what president is saying, game is over. Okay, game is over, but how I'm going to leave? I could have consulted with the president. Okay, we made a mistake. What you advise us? One is still organizationally assumed to be they were strong. Mm -hmm. They have the money in their hand, Comrade uh, Elias. They have did certain things, let's say, and so on. They could sit also with their people, they make a rectification, remove the elderly generation, bring a younger generation, brilliant, clever ones, and so on, build a bridge, accept yourself. There, there were actually some. Uh, Tigrayans. Uh, I've seen one gentleman, uh, Tigrayan, I think a seminar in London mm -hmm. about three years ago, just 
just before the demise of the TPLF, uh, and he said, why are we uh, stuck in this uh, fruitless conflict with our brothers in Eritrea? Why? For what? For whose benefit? 20 years, Tigray has suffered, he said. You, if, you, if you could understand Tigrinya, Muhammad, and listen to... I mean, he spoke with passion, and you can hear in his words uh, the anger uh, of truth. Uh, Tigray is suffering, he said. Uh, uh, for 20 years, it is, we have become a garrison. Uh, there is no economy. Uh, the people of Tigray are uh, dependent on uh, grain, uh, f- uh, rotten uh, you know, food uh, delivered by these uh, relief agencies. Uh, and for that, they they have a long line, he said. Uh, why don't we give back Badme? Uh, believe me, he said, if we give back Badme, we will get more from our Eritrean brothers if we cooperate. Badme is not the, should not be the issue. Indeed. Indeed. But... Uh, I don't think uh, there was. I don't think there was a critical mass in in Tigray to say enough of this. Huh? We are fed up of this war mongering. We want to live in peace. The war in 1998 was a disaster. The ruling of the Hague verdict by the Boundary Commission is final and binding. Let us accept it. And live in peace with our neighbors, Eritrea, and we can we can benefit mutually. One lone voice is the, the only voice of reason I heard so far. Uh, maybe there are others who can think like who think like that with no, sanity no, no. and wisdom. I hope, uh, but uh, you know the. We witness in the West the remnants of the TPLF. It is uh, farcical <laughs> with the way they are hyping this up, uh, lies after lies, claiming that uh, uh, Eritrea did this, Eritrea did that, stories of uh, they have genocide. Been- and yes, it is have- incredible. Look, uh, I just want to give you one example, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Elias. When there was a famine in 1984 in Tigray, mm. 1984, there was a, a very big Irish NGO, Comrade uh, Elias, and I wanted that the Tigrayan masses and the Tigrayan people, brothers and sisters, sister, to listen to me this. I have no hate. I love the people of Tigray. I have contributed in their struggle. I have never attacked people as people. I have only attacked and rejected TPLA for an organization. Mm-hmm. It was a famine. And this famine, Irish Concern, supported the military regime in Addis Ababa. And in that support, they paid a lot of money for resettlement, and a lot of Tigrayans and other Ethiopians died by transportation only. And instead of changing their condition in their own area, this is what you see now in Matakal and so, and so all these problems. Mm-hmm. Then, the one who really advocated for that is another, look, he is a drug pusher, who was identified as a drug pusher, Graham Hancock. Mm-hmm. Graham Hancock, he went to Somalia, he published Beautiful Somalia, married a Somali, he had three children from a Somali woman, and so and so on, but he wanted to be rich. And he had contradiction with Somali Ministry of Information. Finally, he went to Mangisu and became friend of Mangisu in the time of the war between Somalia and Ethiopia. He supported, and he's the one who brought and convinced the Irish concern to come to Tigray, to Mangisu. And they paid a huge amount of money. 
When Graham Hancock understood that the regime in Addis Ababa is collapsing, the military regime's time is over, he, he turned his clothes. And switched to the TPLF. He switched it in a, in a very nice acrobat. Yeah, he wrote about that the Ark of Covenant, uh, and the, Aksu. The, yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I know the charlatan, yeah. <laughs> no, but the thing is that <laughs> how they are analyzing, how they look at us. Uh, yeah. Yeah? And then he said that the Ark of Earth, the, uh, he came to Tigray and he... Uh, yeah, he wrote a big book about that. Uh. <laughs> 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 and then after that, he went to Egypt, the pyramids, how yeah, aliens bravo, came to yeah, build. But it, it is the package he organized, because what made him to organize like that? He understood. Uh, charlatan. The psychology, yeah. he understood the psychology. Mm. He understood the psychology of the leadership of TPLA. They are not sophisticated, they are not aware what's happening in the world, the technique of the colonialists, the new colonialist forces, what kind of tree, intrigue and so they will bring. They really believe. And he brought them that, in fact, he said, that it is, they are the most civilized people in the world is Tigray in action. He pushed them on the line that it is the same as uh, Kamar, uh, Khmer Rouge uh, as they did. He pushed them and put them mm -hmm. into uh, a Gagne. So, these are very, 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 very brutal individuals, brutal intellectuals, uh, charlatans and, 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 and imperialists, have no Eurocentrist, have no respect for African people. I hope the people of Tigray from this experience read all these documents and read the interviews of President Isaiah. At one time, President Isaiah said, I'm only sad, I'm saddened for the people of Tigray. These people, they abused the people of Tigray. They created, can you imagine, the whole environment, uh, 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 the environment became against them. Uh, there is no sympathy for Tigray in Ethiopia and so and so and so on. The myth they have created for them. Look, another damage which they did and which President Isaiah in his last interview mentioned. Antaria in Arabic, it's called. Mm -hmm. huh? it, it, it created a psychology on them. They are the bravest fighters and they can create fight, uh, uh, and win every battle. And this psychology, mm -hmm. you could see, I remember when C. Abraha in 1992, when he was a minister of defense, he collected children, women, elderly people, and so on in Harrah. And he made a speech to these people. He said, we how to make war. And again, in the last interview... He repeated the same thing uh, <laughs> about uh, yes, six yes. months ago. Yeah, We know yes, how yes. to make war and we know and we did, can create did, war. Did. Yes, you see, his Akam, his understanding of the world is very, very poor, this man. How can... Uh, a, war, a warlord of uh, medieval periods, maybe. Medieval uh, period, bravo, comrade. Uh, of the Genghis Khan times, Genghis maybe. Khan. But uh, hey, Genghis Khan was a, a, a very astute uh, strategist uh, yeah, compared but, to... Uh, yes, but they, they didn't brought any civilization. And finally, they disappeared and they left the people of Tigray uh, the la, la, orphan. And we... the uh, people of Horn of Africa, we invite any democratic Tigrayan to come, we'll make an interview with you. This is also your television. You are welcome. We will want to, know, to, to discuss with you. We want to participate to show the people of Tigray where is the damage. They are the people of Tigray, they are our brothers and sisters. Again, they want them to continue. Now, now the Tigray people, it is, it is, it is, uh, and uh, they are in a very bad situation. The region is shrinked. Uh, they waged the war in the time before the peasants collected the harvest. Second is that they waged the war after the locusts destroyed uh, a lot of farms and so on. Do you think, Comrade uh, uh, Elias, these are serious, respectable people who really love their own population, love the peasantry? to wage a war in a such difficult situation for Tigray? 
Well, um, I gave up on uh, on the, the TPLF and its uh, leadership, the mentality that uh, they do not care for uh, the people of Tigray. You remember in 1984, 85, uh, the famine you mentioned. Yes. There's a, a, a story that uh, the BBC did. Uh, I, actually, it was Martin Plout. Yes. Uh, in 2010. We'll put the, uh, the connection to that. Very and good, he, his witnesses were uh, Dr. Aragao Iberhe and Gebre Medina Raya, also yes. ex-member of EPLF in Australia. Mm-hmm. And they corroborated to him that uh, at the time of famine, the TPLF convinced the, the relief organizations to, to give them cash so they can buy grain from some parts of Tigray that had bumper harvest, maybe Wolkait area, I think, the western part of uh, Wolkait Zagede area, uh, and then distribute it to the eastern part. You know what they did? Truck loads of uh, supposed grain. Huh? At the top, a few sacks were filled with grain. But the bulk of it, the bottom, was filled with sand. So essentially, they were selling the relief agencies s- sand. <laughs> sand. And in this way, the TPLF garnered millions of dollars from, from this famine relief while their people are suffering. Uh, I mean, this is an unconscionable uh, organization with uh, political ethos or culture that uh, never cared for the people. Not a single, uh, you know, uh, th- there was no passion, compaction, compassion, for for the suffering of the people, uh, it was all about power, about uh, coming on top in Ethiopia, about vendetta, about uh, their own uh, you know insecurities against uh, what they perceived uh, you know insults from Eritrea or from Amhara or from other quarters, uh, that was their driving, their, their driving motive. Uh, no clear uh, ideological line, although they try to clock it with progressive, uh, uh, you know, uh, clothing. In reality, it was just the 1976 uh, TPLF manifesto. All along, it was that. Indeed. And it never changed in 45 years uh, towards the end. They uh, they gambled uh, big, a very huge miscalculation, and brought disaster to themselves. But like you said, uh, it's unfortunate that the price also has to be paid by the by the people of Tigray. Uh, and towards that end, we hope that uh, real, genuine democratic uh, elements emerge now in Tigray to to really. Uh, lead the way towards reconciliation, uh, to reconciliation within Ethiopia, reconciliation with their neighbor Eritrea, because uh, there is no alternative. The, the only alternative is to live in peace with, uh, within yourself and within your neighbors. Otherwise, uh, uh, the, I mean, the, the prognosis for the near future, if if this type of war mongering of this uh, vindictiveness of uh, vengefulness uh, continues in some elite quarters in Tigray, uh, I don't think that will be good for the people of Tigray uh, in the long in the long term. I agree with you, Comrade Elias. Just to give you, I was I was my family. I was in Eritrea earlier in 2012. Uh, uh, giving seminar to the uh, Tigrayan movement, which is in Eritrea, Demhit. Mm-hmm. Very nice people. 
majority of them they are uh, 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 for our listeners demhit is the tigrinya acronym for uh, an opposition group uh, which was based in eritrea called uh, tigray people's democratic movement tpdm right yes yes continue uh, and uh, uh, when my family and two sons of mine they came to visit me uh, this movement uh, invited them and organized it was a holiday organized uh, uh, also some music and uh, uh, a lot of the grands came and we ate and then so on and they showed their programs their videos and all this then after we finished very kind of people the comrade this uh, is i lived with them and i know them mm, i remember uh, this was uh, uh, in 2014 i think was it yes. 2013 yeah yes and so when we came out from uh, uh, that celebration my youngest son elias asked me at that moment also mele died in mm-hmm. 2012 and they showed also about him and so on and their movement then he asked me elias he said the one who died that is the one who is ruling ethiopia he asked me he said yes and these people are also are from his area i said yes they are the same people he said he's a very bad man mm-hmm. my son was very young such such a nice people why is doing that you couldn't understand mm-hmm. then you and she said i don't understand no nah? all these people and so on they wanted to fight him and this and this and he's from them then i explained to them with the condition of belgium and this and this and this and they start getting understanding so ordinary grians when you see them i visited om hajar i went there all their camps and so on you know, women girls and boys who come every time from Tigray and so on. They are very nice and they say it's a miserable situation in Tigray. And they never felt any discrimination in Eritrea. They tell me that it is, they, in fact, their organization is much disciplined, at least it is the farm and so on and this and this. They have some, uh, they are at least uh, economically self-sufficient than the other organizations. The people of Tigray have uh, uh, if it have the correct leadership the correct vision and they can sort out the contradiction uh, 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 properly i'm sure the people of tigray they can come up again provided that it is they sort out and they do their homework and particularly the petty bourgeoisie of the tigrayans so called schooled one come and be attached to their own people Uh, 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 and understand their own people, understand their main friends and main enemies. As long as it's not that, imperialists will use them as a destabilizing factor in the region. But if they have become destabilizing factor, the more they go on that line, what they are doing now, anti-Eritrea campaign, anti-Dr. Abiy campaign, and so on, so, it will marginalize them more and more and more. It is now is the duty of Tigrayans, duty of Tigrayans to come up with a program and discuss and identify what brought them to this. The other uh, major thing which was inculcated on them, Antaria in Arabic they say, Antar wa Abla, you know. Huh? Mm-hmm. They pump them that as if it is they can defeat Japan, they can defeat the United States and so on. The grants are brave. They can not only walk, but they can fly like a false sense of bravado sense and uh, bravado and so on, and it collapsed in two weeks. It shocked them because it was a lie. You know, that is the, that is not on the ground when he is telling them President Isaias to the Brazil. Why you are preparing? You are preparing is nothing. If it, it's a lie, you cannot manage it. In, indirectly. Why do you want to do What did you have now? He's telling him, think. But the man, he was not thinking. Not mm. What does it mean for him? 
if he start thinking, he could have removed the elderly, try to work with the young ones, reach the masses, discuss. Dr. Abi was pushing uh, President Isaias and asking President Isaias to see him with the hope that at least the Brazilian is younger and closer with age, a little bit older than me, but he is not like those, the old the guard. The old guard. Old guard. From that perspective, he's always as, uh, lobbying President Isaias and so on. But it proved he himself also is the same. Now also he will not, if he's alive, he will not bring anything. So we, you, the uh, comrade Elias, me, and the other team of the whole of African media, we appeal to, to great intelligentsia, intellectuals, please come yes. and work with us. Uh, let's, make, let's be a bridge. Let's be a bridge. And let's take the past as a lesson and build uh, together a new Horn of Africa. A new Horn of Africa cannot be built without participation of Tigrayan people. You are our brothers and sisters. Yeah, Tigray is part of Ethiopia and must okay. be part of this uh, yes. new Horn of Africa indeed. Yes. And uh, uh, desperately uh, needed indeed in Tigray uh, voices of sanity and wisdom. Uh, voices of uh, genuine democratic uh, reform uh, and most of all voices of peace. Uh, enough of uh, this uh, war, psych vicious cycle of conflict and uh, toxic uh, politics of hate and ethnic polarization. Uh, that era is, is over now and uh, it is all the more uh, important that uh, voices of sanity emerge in uh, this new new era we are entering. Uh, well, we have more or less uh, touched the the major points. The the one thing I want you to address before we we conclude, uh, Mohammed, is uh, the, the wider regional issue, in particular this, uh, this conflict, manufactured border conflict, the president called it, uh, that is emerging between Sudan and Ethiopia, which is a matter of concern because it is not of, uh, of, of interest or benefit to two peoples, to the two countries, that the president, uh, indicated that this border issue was there for a long time. Uh, it is, it's not new. Why does it have to come at this particular time when both countries are going through a difficult transitional period, uh, both in Sudan and Ethiopia, um, that uh, forces from near or far who push this agenda of manufactured conflict. He compared it uh, to, well, uh, to what we in Eritrea passed through. You remember in the 90s, there was a manufactured conflict in Hanaish uh, with Yemen. Uh, and then after that, the Badme border <laughs> conflict as a pretext, uh, the Djibouti border conflict. So. We have become wiser of this uh, this manufactured border conflicts that uh, that instigate wars that should never be. Uh, so, uh, if you can briefly elaborate on that, and then we will conclude uh, this section. The president, when he mentioned also adding that, uh, in the same topic, he says. Both countries are in, in a process of transition. Both country is in a process of transition, in a process of uh, uh, like a woman giving a difficult birth. 27, 28 years in Ethiopia, an abuse of power and marginalization. 30 years in Sudan, abuse of power and marginalization by Islamists, destroyed the whole infrastructure of Sudanese people, 
looted 90 billion dollars, weakened the Sudanese battle. Sudan at one time was a net receiver of refugees of 8 million from other African countries. Now Sudan is a net exporter of refugees. This was it's, it's, it's a bread basket of Africa. It had a lot of richness. But Islamists, the same like TPLF in Ethiopia, destroyed the Sudan. Now, the contradiction we see here. In one sense, the imperialists, and particularly European Union, understand that it is no refugees should cross Sudan and reach Libya. For that, they support the Genjovid general, they give him funds from the European Union. Look, uh, 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 and they gave him hundreds of thousands, hundreds and thousands land cruisers to protect Sudanese border between Libya and Sudan. That refugees cannot cross and enter Libya. Because once they are in Libya, they will come to the coast, and then they will take a boat, some of them will die, media will bring problems, there is a pressure on the politicians, and so on. There is this, what they call, refugee crisis. They are so mm -hmm. frightened about it, one side. But on the other side, Sudan was chosen to be the biggest prison of refugee camp. Because it is a very big country, we will keep the refugees there for wherever it is. Whatever we create, we can feed them there in the camps. And these camps, they will be a recruiting ground for whatever purpose they wanted to use. Because when you bring a big, huge concentration camp, I call it concentration camp. Mm -hmm. And then that concentration camp, that it is, you create even an economic situation where there will be even a class contradiction. There will be shops, there will be tea rooms, there will be small uh, la, 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 hotels. It's like the one... Yeah, re recruiting ground for all kinds of uh, all insurgents, kinds. regime change agendas and what have you. Intervention. You recruit the young people, whether you make them Islamist or you make them Buddhist, whatever, they don't care. Here nobody thinks about religion. Religion have disappeared. Here our churches are closed a long time ago. They are selling now here. Some Egyptians bought the Orthodox Church, bought here and, and so on, a church, which was a Catholic church and so on. And the one who was selling it is a priest. He was laughing. He said that we are, we are closing all churches. This one is coming and buying a church here. <laughs> he was laughing and he made money out of it. Therefore, Europe doesn't believe in religion anymore. It is finished. So what they wanted to make is that the new interventionist. This comes up as a recruiting ground of young Africans, which they will be used for their different wars with the inside uh, in the continent. That is it, what the president is talking about. So suddenly, this problem between Ethiopia and so on, and this, this is irrelevant. Sudan is a very big land. They couldn't even use the big part of it. So they want to create a problem between so-called the transition of Ethiopia, that it is Ethiopia also is, is birds caving for a difficult situation to maybe to to make it deformed kid, the same for Sudan. The contradiction in Sudan, you have the civilians who are hundred types of different colors that they have. They don't have a clear uh, ideology and so on. The economic condition is very, very bad. The uh, situation is economically is changing every single minute. This is a dual power between the army and the civilians. I don't know how long it will continue. So it is a transition. It's correct, the president said. Ethiopia is a bit better uh, uh, than Sudan, in, in a way you could say. But it is also in transition. I hope that it is. Is, is the major TPLF have disappeared, melted down. So President, uh, Prime Minister Abiy, who is now situation, he goes to election, he will be elected, then the bigger possibility of his stability in the region will come. First, that the main troublemaker is not there anymore. They cannot send weapons, money, and so on. 
So in that sense, I think uh, the coming three, four months, uh, in June, there will be election of Ethiopia, and then probably Prime Minister uh, Abiy will be elected. And then I think, uh, uh, in general, the stability of Ethiopia will be solid, and our project of Horn of Africa uh, uh, will continue. And uh, in that sense, we want also that uh, I appeal to uh, Prime Minister Abiy that to handle firstly, the issue in Tigray, that it is we have to be very prudent, patience is very high. And other Ethiopians also have to change their psychology and open a new chapter with our brothers and sisters in Tigray to rebuild Ethiopia in the region. This is the way I see. And uh, we have to initiate a debate among the people of Horn of Africa people, whether it is in the United States, Europe, or uh, other places. And I'm sure that I'm appealing to my brothers and sisters and friends to be the vanguard of uh, this new initiative that it is, uh, they have to discuss among themselves and to be also try to reapproach uh, the Tigrayan people uh, in diaspora. Uh, build uh, 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 confidence building diplomacy. What happened in the past is the past. Al Fatma, they say the Arabs. Mm. We have buried it. And then finally, in, in the conclusion of that interview, uh, Mohammed, the president said, uh, by way of uh, a call, the Qutat was the word he used in yeah. Tigrinya. Yes. That in this particular juncture, uh, he said we need maximum uh, maximum mobilization, uh, participation of people in all sectors to defend the the victory, but uh, to real to be conscious also that there are forces that that are against this uh, this peace, this triumph, this victory. And so uh, uh, a maximum mobilization is needed to defend the gains uh, of, of, uh, you know, of the revolution. So, uh, so how, how do you read this, uh, this call of uh, maximum mobilization, all hands on deck, uh, uh, call for unity and solidarity? There are some forces who want to misinterpret it as a call for war, but uh, that was not uh, the president's uh, call. The call of the president is, let's go forward. As united people of the whole of Africa, we are opening a new chapter. It's not an easy chapter. It is very difficult. There is external forces that will intervene. They will buy the most non-advanced element from our us, from within. They will try to create destabilizations, as he calls it, that uh, 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 whether they are big or small foreign powers in the region, and create a contradiction, false contradiction among the people of the region. There is no major contradiction, antagonistic contradiction among the people of the region. From that point of view, he said, we have to mobilize as much as possible with new vision of us we have. He was correct. Which is fits to the new era of the Horn of Africa. Of course, uh, when we see the balance of forces, uh, the democratic, the stronger force now, we are stronger, yes. We are stronger. The three pillars of the Horn of Africa, whether it is Somalia, Ethiopia, and, 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 and Eritrea, that it is, the vision is one now. At least it is directed, what the Muslim says, to one qibla, to one line. And we are also the vanguard, in a vanguard in the sense, we have to mobilize on that line. There will always be those foolish ones, those who cannot understand why TPLF disappeared, the TPLF uh, uh, ruled by uh, people like us and they are from our region. But uh, they are, uh, and they were given a, a crack drug right, uh, 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 without realizing where they are living. There will always be this element around us. 
But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. let them be there. They will be there. We, uh, but the real medicine, we have to mobilize the population wherever it is, which is, means that it is. We are the diplomats, the militants of the people of world of Africa. We are the defenders of the, the new defenders, era of peace. The new or, or the era of peace. That is our work. That is what it is waiting us. That is what we have to transform and bring it to our children uh, that they can mobilize with a new vision. Of course, there are forces they like to be united themselves. Uh, but they, they don't like that we are united. What brings a Greek with a brother? They don't eat the same type of food. They don't dress the same type of dress, except what the multinational produce to them. Their languages are different. Their, their psychology is different, and so on. But strangely, they call themselves European Union. And they start to say, we have a common histo- historical basis. We have more common historical basis, the people of North Africa, than them. Our languages are interlinked. Our cultures are interlinked. Our religion, nobody brought for us religion. We had religion before them. On the contrary, the religion we have, it went from our zone and, and brought them to civilization themselves. They were barbarians and so on. Christianity is not. It's not invented by them. It was in Alabo, in Syria. There's an Aramaic speaker, the man. So we have to be very aware. And we have to be proud, not to be arrogant, but proud of ourselves and our history. We have no genetical contradiction among ourselves, and we have to try to unify the people as much as possible, and we will be our work uh, until we die from now on work, building the new Horn of Africa. And we don't want our kids, our young generation, to lose time. And we will be, if you want, the first Bilal or the first whatever it is, we will be in the front line, me, Comrade Elias, and all our comrades in the Horn of Africa television. And uh, I appeal to the people of Ethiopia, to the people of Tigray, don't put it in your head. We are not your enemy. We are your brothers and sisters. Please come with us and let's work this beautiful journey together. And thank you very much. Thank you, indeed, uh, Comrade Mohammed, uh, for the new Horn of Africa. We will continue to mobilize our people's resources. We will continue to organize, to raise the consciousness of the people, and to be the voice for. Uh, a new era of peace, cooperation, unity, and solidarity among all peoples and uh, nations of the Horn of Africa. This was a very fruitful uh, discussion on uh, the on the president's uh, interview, the recent interview of President Isaiah Safolki. Next week, we will continue our discussion on Somalia, part two. Until next time, Maya Amelia Samare, salam. <laughs>